Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Thomas Park and today we're talking about my five worst rated VPNs that I've ever reviewed. Now, some of these were done quite a long time ago and I'm gonna go through each uh, VPN and let you know why it got such a bad review. So first up on this list is GOM VPN. Now, GOM VPN is interesting because I wouldn't really consider it like a real VPN in some ways. Um, it's apparently pretty popular with Google Chrome and it's pretty easy to use. Um, but I didn't really consider it a VPN solution um, in my review. Also, the person who made it claims it works with Netflix, which I couldn't get it to work. Um, overall, the, the, the model is around $3.99 a month or $20 a month uh and this is kind of like a weird thing about it in that you could be like an affiliate for them and if you pay twenty dollars a month and you recommend people you can actually make money and it kind of reminds me a little bit of a pyramid scheme in that sense so a little bit sketchy there um in terms of the software it's pretty simple um you just uh put it in your browser and it'll give you some basic like proxy kind of service um to give you some anonymity now mobile app functions just like uh, the Chrome app and it doesn't really have too much going on. Like I said, I couldn't get it working with Netflix and the speeds were okay just for a basic proxy. Now actually in this review, uh, looking back, um, if I were to update it right now, which I probably will, I would actually probably put GOM VPN a little bit lower. Um, it's a little bit annoying to me how they marketed it as GOM VPN. And I think at the time I was kind of easy on it just because it's like so simple. And I mean, it works, but like at the same time, it's not that impressive that it works if it's like nothing there to be, you know, really looked at critically. So I would definitely probably put Gone VPN lower on the list. Um, but next up we have Molvad VPN, which is actually a VPN I'm surprised to see rated so low on my website. Um, this is a well-respected VPN in a lot of ways. And one reason a lot of people like this VPN is because it's pretty private and secure in terms of anonymity. One of its kind of gimmicky things is that, you know, you could sign up with just kind of like a code. And if you do here, you get account, you could see, you could just uh, verify your human and generate an account number. So it, it has that anonymity factor, which is good. Pricing isn't too bad in my review. I noted it's around 650 a month, which is actually pretty fair. That's even cheaper than private internet access. So I was pretty, uh, I gave them a pretty good pricing score. I might bump that a little bit up right now to maybe nine out of 10 for pricing. And in terms, in terms of the software at the time of the review, they've probably implemented new changes since then. Uh, this was quite a while ago, 2016 actually. So quite a bit of time ago and three years. Um, at the time, their software was super basic, though, and nothing uh, too good here. It's just really, really basic. Probably starting out here, they do have some decent settings. At the time of the review, they didn't have a mobile app, uh, so that kind of dinged them on that. Let's go ahead and see if they have a mobile app right now. Some uh, VPNs, like AirVPN, still don't have one. So... I type in Molvad v VPN, NordVPN comes up for some reason, kind of weird. Um, but yeah, they still don't have a mobile app, which is not good. In terms of extra services, they're pretty bare bones. In terms of support, uh, Molvad is kind of weak in that aspect as well. They only have like an email address here. They don't really have too much support pages or anything. Pretty minimalist website, that's for sure. Um, I guess you could email them and get some decent support. Or maybe talk to them on Twitter, but they don't have live chat really or support pages or any tickets or something like that. So looking back right now, I would think I was maybe a little bit harsh. They really kind of lost some points here with no mobile application. So that's definitely going to hurt them still. They do probably have a new software, so that might bump it up a little bit more. Um, in terms of extra services, they probably don't work with Netflix. I haven't really heard anyone talking about it working with Netflix, and it doesn't really seem like the kind of service that would work with Netflix. Um, so extra services is still not going to get too much higher. And again, the website, um, I, I might bump it up a couple points just because it's easy to use. And they do kind of have an interesting kind of private way to make accounts. In terms of servers, they've probably collected a few more servers since then. But at the time of the review, it was a pretty small VPN provider with not too many servers. And I would probably bump their privacy 
up maybe to even 10 out of 10 because they do have that good way to create an account. They don't have a logging policy and they do seem to be a pretty reputable VPN provider. And in terms of speeds, well, in this review, I got, you know, mediocre speeds, nothing too bad, nothing too great. Um, I did get kind of get a high ping in that test right there. And in terms of support, I might bump it up a little bit depending on how they respond to emails. But again, there's not really much live chat or anything there. So overall, I would probably bump up Molvad a little bit from when I did that review. I'm going to probably re-review Molvad, see how it's improved since I reviewed it in 2016. But that's probably one of the reasons why it was pretty low back then. <clears throat> Next up on the list, we have BitGuard VPN. Now, you could call it BT Guard, but I just call it BitGuard or whatever. Um, this is one of the oldest VPNs around. Uh, it was actually um, kind of popular in 2008 as kind of like a, one of the best VPNs to torrent with. But since then, they really haven't done anything to the site at all. In fact, if you click on it and you visit the website, um, you can see how basic and how it looks. Um, nothing really here. So... Anyways, let's talk about what I reviewed it. In terms of pricing, it kind of just got standard pricing. Uh, one month for $9.95, nothing too special. But I did kind of find the 12 month subscription plan a bit expensive, um, as well as some other plans a little bit expensive. Now, probably my biggest critique of BT Guard was software. It just is really plain, nothing really uh, workable here even. It's pretty buggy when I tested it out. Of course, they don't have a mobile app and they don't really have too many extra services to offer. I kind of critiqued them pretty heavily on their website and that it's pretty outdated. Um, it looks like since then, maybe they kind of figured out. Um, yeah, on the main page, there was a video. As you can see down here, they haven't even updated their copyright thing. So probably not really updating this VPN or even paying attention to it. They just kind of abandoned it. Looks like this video is not even loading as well. So, you know, when did I review this? Uh, three years ago. So we still haven't fixed that. Um, as you can see, Definitely not the best VPN provider. In terms of speeds, um, they don't really have too many servers and speeds were very slow as you can see here. So for torrenting or anything else, not really worth using. As you can see, pretty easy to see why it was rated so low. Not only that, but I noted that they did use 120 Blowfish encryption, which even three years ago was pretty bad. Um, people have been using 256 AES encryption for quite a while. Um, so there you go. Next up on the list is Anonymous VPN. And now, if I'm not mistaken, this is Popcorn Time's recommended VPN to use. I'm not really sure if it's still kicking. We could go kind of look that up. So, it looks like they do kind of have the Anonymous VPN uh, search engine optimization, which is good to see. Um, but as you can see, it's expensive for a VPN. Um, and when I reviewed it, I find that their software um, was pretty bad. It um, doesn't really have too much going on with it um, in terms of the website. Um, it was fine, um, but they definitely had a small service selection. And I couldn't really find too much information about privacy. And in terms of speeds, it had really bad speeds. Um, there you go. Looks like I didn't put too much effort into this review, to be honest. Probably just because it wasn't uh, very good at all. Um, must have just kind of lost steam reviewing it because I was just tired of reviewing shitty VPNs. Um, but yeah, nothing special there. And a VPN.com, definitely uh, a subpar option. I think I was a little bit harsh in this one just because... Um, it's, it's such a weird kind of company. If you go to the website, if you go to the website, you could see that they've just completely abandoned ship and um, what the heck is this? You know what a VPN is? A VPN allows you to browse secure. Wait, what? You know what a VPN is? A VPN allows you to browse securely. By using a VPN service, you can hide your activity from prying eyes. You don't want people knowing what you've been doing online, and that's why you want to use the best VPN. Find your very best VPN by answering a few easy questions at VPN.com. Wow. So you can see what I mean by this company. They started out when I reviewed them 
as an actual VPN company. I guess they spent like a million dollars to purchase this domain name. Domain name, and you could kind of see. So VPN.com was just. I reviewed it there um, not too long ago, but it looks like they've just totally done a pivot and maybe be been bought out from NordVPN since then. It looks like they're just kind of advertising them. Um, interesting to see that they paid Kevin O'Leary to advertise their website. I wonder how much that cost. But yeah, overall, it's just the landing page for VPN recommendations. Doesn't really even look like the website is even used anymore. Yeah, as you can see, the last stuff they've tweeted was um, in September. So anyways, guys, I hope you liked this video. Kind of an interesting look at what made some of the worst VPNs um, that bad, in my opinion. Now, as I mentioned before, some of these v VPN reviews I probably do need to update. Um, I'm probably going to take a look at Molvad VPN um, because I think it might deserve a little bit better than a 4.7 out of 10. However, the rest of these VPNs are really not that good at all, and I, I don't even really think they're worth taking a look at. Um, again, to be honest, especially not VPN.com or BitGuard and GOM VPN. It's just kind of like a proxy, not really a VPN. Not a CVN. Um, it's Popcorn Times recommended VPN, um, but I don't think it's anything good. I remember testing it out and not liking it at all. Um, a little bit scammy there, how they're trying to kind of get people to use anonymous VPN, uh, kind of affiliate, kind of weird deal there. But anyways, guys, thanks for checking out this video, and let me know what you th thought of it down in the comments down below, and I'll see you again very soon.